Hey, welcome to Analog Output. Today we're looking at this module. This is a Cosmo format version of a module by Rene Schmitz called YASH. YASH standing for Yet Another Sample and Hold. So what is a sample and hold? Well, a sample and hold is a circuit that has a couple of inputs. There's a signal and a clock. The signal is some varying voltage and the clock is some short pulses and what happens is whenever a clock pulse comes in the circuit looks at the voltage on the signal input and copies that voltage to the output and it holds that voltage at that output until the next clock pulse comes in and then it checks the signal on the input and sends that voltage to the output, holds that voltage there until the next clock pulse comes in, and so forth and so on. So, for instance, something that is very commonly done in synthesizers with a sample and hold is you connect it to a noise source for the signal, which means the signal input is a voltage that's very rapidly varying around at random, and then you send in a series of clock pulses and every time a clock pulse comes in you get some random voltage on the output so the output goes stepping from one random output value to another well what good is that i mean why would anybody want to make use of anything like that what what, what would you use it for okay maybe that Sample and hold is not only used in synthesizers, though it's actually quite common in a lot of electronic devices and applications. So it's probably not too surprising there's a lot of sample and hold integrated circuits on the market. One of these is called the LF398, and it's the LF398 that is the basis of the YASH design. And in fact, the chip is doing most of the heavy lifting. Really about the only thing that's needed to add to this chip is circuitry to make sure you have a suitable clock input for the chip. So what do you need for a suitable clock input? Well, you need an unsuitable clock input to start with. You need something to work with. So there is a simple square wave oscillator as part of the design. So this generates clock pulses that you can use to trigger the sample and hold. You can also plug in an external clock signal if you want to use that. Either way you need to condition that clock signal. You need to make sure that it's the right height. You need to make sure it's good and square. Things like that. So there's some logic gates that do this kind of cleanup and take whatever main G clock signal you might have put in on the input and turn it into something nice. There's also a transistor that drives an LED that flashes to say, hey, a clock input just came in. And there's a resistor and capacitor whose job it is to shorten that clock pulse down to a very short three microseconds long. Whatever the length of the input clock pulse is, it shortens it down to three microseconds. Why does it do that? Well, the way this chip actually works is the output actually tracks the input as long as the clock is on. So you put in a clock signal and as long as the clock signal is on, the output is the same voltage as the input if the input varies the output varies and then when the clock pulse turns off then it holds the last remaining voltage on the output until the next clock signal starts up again and so this kind of track and hold behavior is maybe something you'd find interesting or useful to use in a synthesizer but most of the time what you really want is this sample and hold behavior where it just takes the voltage at the very beginning 
of the clock pulse at the at the time the clock pulse turns on and holds that so what you do is you take the clock pulse and you shorten it down to three microseconds which is instantaneous as far as our ears are concerned okay so you generate clock pulses you clean them up you flash an led you shorten the clock pulse to three microseconds and then you just feed that short clock pulse to the LF398, you feed the input signal to the 398, and it's doing the rest. For my version, I pretty much followed the design of Rene Schmitz. I made a few changes, most notable of which are, first of all, I added a clock output. So if you're using the internal clock generator, that clock signal appears here and you can use this to clock other modules in your synthesizer. Secondly, I added an attenuator on the input signal. I also added this switch here which is uh, labeled sample and hold on one side, track and hold on the other side. All this does is it shorts out that capacitor I told you about before and with that capacitor shorted it no longer shortens the clock pulse input. So whatever length input you put on the clock, the sample and hold circuit will now be tracking the input voltage as long as that clock signal is on. So now you get this behavior where it's tracking the input and then holding it, and then tracking the input and then holding it. Is there a really good use fit case for that behavior I don't know. I haven't really thought of anything really good to do with it, but it's such a simple modification. It's just literally just a switch. Why not put it in? And sooner or later, I'll probably think of something interesting to do with it. Um, and I want to thank Soundbender for bringing the possibility of that modification to my attention. So let's take a look at what it will do. Try that again. Okay, here's the sample and hold. We got a signal coming in from a noise generator, signal going out to control voltage input on an oscillator. Let's just hear what it's doing. Okay, so sort of classic random sounds, and we can change the range of that using the signal level. And we can play with the clock rate. But we can also put in some different signal. This is a low frequency triangle wave. Okay, now I want to try something else. I'm going to turn up the frequency on that signal. I'm going to send in an external clock that can go slower than the internal one can. So now we got this happening.
And I'm going to go track and hold. So you can hear it's alternating between following the rapidly varying signal and when the clock is off, it's holding. So it's going kind of squiggle and hold and squiggle and hold. And do you have a use for that sort of thing? I don't know, but uh, there it is anyway. That's the sample and hold module and how it sounds. There you have it. Yet another sample and hold by Renee Schmitz. Hope you enjoyed that. We're going to have some more interesting modules to talk about soon. So stay tuned, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on Analog Output.